Hey guys, Rob here at 3D Printscape. Today I'm going to show you how to upgrade the firmware on your Indoor 3 or Indoor 3 Pro. Uh, this process will also work with a lot of other Creality models as well. I just don't have the entire thing documented end to end, um, but it should work assuming you just comment out the right printer, which we'll go over when we get to that step. All right, so there's a couple things you're going to need to get started. Uh, one is going to be an Uno or Uno clone board. Uh, I'll link to these in the description below. They're not that expensive, um, but you will need it in order to uh, install the bootloader on your printer. Uh, the bootloader is a one-time install. It's going to be needed for swapping out the firmware and all of that. But once it's done once, you can easily swap out the firmware in the future. Um, the second thing you're going to need is uh, just a batch of jumper cables. This is just a set of them. I'll open them up here when we get to that stage. Um, again, they're not that expensive. If you already have some laying around, you can use them. You can also make them if you want. But for me, uh, I just ordered them. Like I said, they weren't that expensive and it comes with more than enough. All right, so um, I also got one thing that just came in. Um, my BL Touch auto level system. Uh, I'll be doing a video on this guy uh, probably in the next couple weeks. So keep an eye out for that. All right, so first let's talk about why you want to upgrade the firmware. Um, taking the features and all of that out of the equation, uh, the printer works, so it's not necessarily a requirement, but the biggest thing is going to be safety. Um, the standard firmware that ships with all the Creality printers does not have thermal runaway protection. So what that means is if the heat sensor probe gets knocked off and or isn't getting read correctly, it will continue to heat up the heating element until you get to the point where it can potentially catch fire. Uh, it's one of the biggest issues and complaints with uh, this type of printer. Uh, it's an easy fix with some of the firmware. And the firmware did have a couple limitations uh, like a year ago, but those limitations have been uh, resolved in later versions. So right now you're not really losing anything by going to this firmware. Uh, you have a couple options when it comes to the firmware. You can go with the Creality uh, newer version from them. Uh, I would not recommend that because it also doesn't have the thermal runaway protection, which is the main reason why I'm doing the upgrade. And then the other one, which is the one I'm going to be using, is by uh, TH3D. It's uh, using Marlin on the back end. It's just an open source community basically who developed it. Um, we'll walk through the process of downloading all of that and we'll get everything that you need to get started. Uh, we will need a Allen wrench in order to get into the board, um, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So this is a little bit more in depth. Uh, it's not too complicated if you follow the process, but if you have any questions, uh, please leave a comment below and I'll try to help you out as much as I can. And before we go ahead and get started, make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe. It'll really help us out. All right, so the first thing I want to do is power up the printer to show you that I'm on the standard firmware. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Then I will go grab the camera, zoom in, and show you what the current firmware version is. All right, guys, so here's our control panel. We'll just go ahead and go to About Printer. You'll see that we're on the Creality 3D firmware version 1.1. Dot six dot two. So that's going to be our starting point. Now let's go ahead and get started. Alright guys, so the first thing we're going to want to do is open up our board here. So let me go ahead and do that. Toss this trash out of the way. Alright, so this guy came with the board itself. As you can see, it's new, so I'm going to open that up. And it also came with a USB cable, uh, which is good because I didn't have too many of these laying around extra, especially at this size. All right, so let's just open this up. All right, so here's the board itself. I'll do a close up on it when I plug it in. What we're going to want to go ahead and do now is go to plug it into the computer and then uh, go ahead and start actually downloading the software we need. But here's a close up of the board itself. It's not too much we need to know about it. It's really just going to be a couple pins and the USB port. That's all we're really going to care about right now. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and plug it in and then 
uh, jump on my computer. All right, guys, so I've got the Uno board plugged in, and the next thing we're going to want to do is go and download the firmware package that we want. Um, one good thing about the TH3D uh, bundle is it comes with the version of Adreno that we need. Uh, it has a couple other modifications to it as well, some of the uh, plugins that you have to install manually if you didn't go that route. Um, so it's really a good package and all around it's probably the best firmware for the printer at this point. Alright, so let's just go ahead and download latest version here. I'll have the URL in the description below. Alright, so we just want to download latest firmware. This might take a minute depending upon your internet connection. It's what, 575 meg. So let's just give that a second to download. Alright, so that's downloaded. I'll go ahead and open this folder up here. Again, installing the bootloader on the printer is a one-time thing. Unfortunately, Creality did not put it on there by default. They just have their uh, default firmware there. Um, but the bootloader allows you to load additional OSs, which will be um, the firmware that we're looking at, which is to the printer itself that's an OS, basically. All right, so let's go ahead and unzip this really quick. Go to extract all. And if you're looking to use the um, BL Touch Auto Level Kit, you're also going to have to walk, uh, run through this process anyway. Uh, so it's really something that's worth the time. You're probably investing a half hour in it up front. But then going forward, it's easy to update the firmware. Just plug it into your computer and push the new firmware, which we'll do at the end. Um, but just the bootloader is just one of those requirements. It's not necessarily a good or bad thing. It's just something we have to do. All right, now that that's extracted, we can go ahead and take a look. Um, I am kind of jumping the video around a little bit just so you're not having to watch things download and extract. I don't think that's the best use of time. So, all right, so let's go to open this up. The main thing we're gonna wanna look at here is open firmware windows. It's uh, just a batch file that opens everything we need. All right, so here is the Adreno IDE and uh, all of the actual firmware. All the configuration changes we're going to need to make, which is really just a couple, will be under this configuration.h file. Uh, I don't want to go into too much detail on all the different settings of the firmware and stuff like that. I'm just going to walk through what you actually need to change to get it to work. Uh, if you want more detail on some of the other changes we can make in the firmware, uh, I can do that in a later video. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is uh, flash the UNO card with the bootloader. So let's go ahead and start that process. Alright, so it's going to go up to File and Examples. And we're going to want to go to Adreno ISP. Oops. Here it is. And then go ahead and select this. It's going to open up a new window here with everything that we need. All right, so the next thing we have to do is uh, just go to Tools. And then the board itself, we want to switch this to Uno. As you can see right now, it's on the Mega 2560. So let's go ahead and select Uno, which will match the card that we're using. And then also you want to make sure that um, under port here, that you're selecting the one that has the actual connection uh, to your Uno board. So uh, in this case, I have something else plugged into COM1. Uh, so we want to switch this over to COM7. If you only have the one thing plugged in, it should just be um, the board itself. Also, it's probably going to be a different port. It's going to assign the ports when it gets plugged in. So don't worry about what port it is. Just make sure that you have something showing up. All right, now we should just be able to upload that to the board. And let's see what it's doing down here. All right, that's done. As you can see here, if you want to just go back through, you see everything that it did. Um, again, I don't want to go into too much detail on what it's doing and how it's doing. That's getting way past the scope of this video. 
I just want to make it so that you actually know how to uh, get the bootloader on the board and get it onto the printer so that we can change out the firmware. The next step is going to be connecting the UNO card to the printer itself. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my main camera here and then kind of show you what it looks like. Um, it's going to be a bunch of cables so from there I'll go ahead and put an image up there as well that you can pause on to see what needs to connect to what. Alright guys, so the next thing we got to do here is take off this cover. Uh, I'm going to try to get the camera as close to this as possible uh, to kind of show you what's going on. Um, but I, like I said, I will put the image up showing you what connectors need to connect to what pins. And this is a one-time process, uh, so while it might seem intimidating, uh, try not to let it stress you out too much. It's not that bad. Uh, also, I went ahead and unplugged the card itself from the computer. Make sure that you're not actually touching the board or any of the components while it's plugged in. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and undo these screws here. I'm using the Allen wrench that came with the printer, uh, but if you don't have it, uh, you'd have to make sure that you get the right size one. A lot of kits will have all the sizes as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew these and then resume the recording afterwards. All right guys, the last time I did this was on an Indoor 3, not the Pro. So that one, you only had the three screws up top. Uh, with the Pro, because uh, they have the fan and everything on the bottom now, you gotta flip it over and then there's one, two, three, four screws you have to remove. Uh, so once you got that off, it exposes the board here and then those are the pins we need to work with. Alright, I went ahead and opened the set of cables that I was talking about. Uh, there are three different types of cables in here. You've got the ones that have male and female, or male and male, and then female, uh, female and female. Uh, we're going to need the female to female ones here. So I'm going to set the rest of them aside. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and cable this up. Um, I will put an image on the screen right afterwards uh, to show you what needs to connect where. Alright guys, I've got it connected. I've printed out my little cheat sheet as well, but I will have this uh, as an image for you uh, here in about a minute. Just go ahead and pause the video on it and then you'll be able to just um, go uh, plug everything in where it belongs. Um, I misspoke a minute ago. We did need one male to female. Uh, it's for this uh, power cable right here going over to this pin. Um, the rest of them, they line up. As you can see here, we've got six and six and they're all in the same order except for this blue goes over to here, which is slot 10. Um, now, you don't have to use the exact same color cables. Uh, in this kit, there are so many cables and so many different colors that I went ahead uh, just for simplicity, um, but that's not a requirement. All right, so the next step is we're gonna wanna plug this into the computer really quick. Uh, this little blue cable is not long enough to reach over to my computer, so I'm just gonna use the black one that I have here. Um, now, I could always move the printer closer to the computer, but I have the cable, so it's not a big deal. If you don't have the cable, you can just move it over, or if you're using a laptop, you can bring it closer. But I'm on my desktop here. All right, so now that we're plugged in, I did want to make a note here that um, we are powering the printer. Uh, through the board and through USB. Uh, similar to how uh, it powers up the printer if you're using a Raspberry Pi. Now, it's only going to give it enough power to run the controls and um, the con actual um, console and all of that. It will not be able to heat up things like your heating elements and actually run a print. Alright, so now let's jump back over to the computer and push this to the printer. Alright guys, now that we're back at the computer here, let's go ahead and uh, push the bootloader to the printer. Uh, make sure you're on the Adreno ISP console that you had open that pushed the bootloader to the UNO card. Alright, so let's go ahead and change some of these settings back to, so that it works with the printer here. We want to go to Tools and switch from UNO down to Sanguino uh, 1284p here. 
and then we want to also uh, verify that we are connected to the board which we are here and then the program or the programmer we need to switch Adreno as ISP now if we go to burn bootloader this should send it to the printer All right, it shows that that's done. I just wanted to take a look at the console output. Everything looks okay here. All right, nice. So now I am going to uh, pause this really quick and unplug the Uno card and plug the printer directly into the computer. So I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back here. I went ahead and plugged the printer into the computer and I unplugged the UNO board. We should be completely done with that. So let's go ahead and close out of this console here. So now that we're back at the console with all the firmware configuration, we got to make sure that all of our uh, languages and configs are set properly. So let's go to tools and programmer. Should be switched to AVR ISP MKLL. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. And then also we want to make sure that we have our uh, the printer on here. So um, the UNO card was COM7 before, now this is COM8. So I'm just going to select that. Alright, so now what we want to do is uncomment Ender3 so that the Adreno firmware knows uh, that that's the printer that we're going to be working with. So let's go ahead and do a search for that. You should see, uh, just put an Ender3, uh, no space, and then you should see Define Ender3. Uh, let's just go ahead and delete these two uh, backslashes, which will remove the comment. And then again, it's showing you to make sure that you have the Sangrino uh, 1284P selected, which is what we did a minute ago. So if we go here, as you can see, that's what we have selected. Now there's another thing here that you don't have to do, but I like to. Um, let's just go ahead and search for MIS. And here, um, And here, uh, I like to just give it a printer name. Uh, again, you don't have to do this, um, but I'm just going to call this Ender3. It's They give it a random uh, weird name. Uh, I don't remember what it actually is if you don't define it. So I just spend the extra 30 seconds here and define it. All right, so next what we're going to want to do is hit Upload to send this to the printer. Alright, as you can see, it took a minute for it to process everything, but then I went ahead and sent everything over to the printer. And if you look here, uh, it said that it's done and it's 100%, so it should work. We'll go ahead and power up the printer here in a second and uh, take a look at it. Um, now, I did want to make a note that this is the part that you would do if you wanted to upgrade the firmware in the future. You would just if you're using this firmware, um, go ahead and launch that batch file at the beginning. Just go over to this file, um, uncomment out the printer type, which in this case is Ender3, and then give it a name and upload. That's it. That's going to be the process to change out the firmware going forward. Um, since the bootloader has already been installed, we are good to go there. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and put the printer back together and uh, show you what it looks like. Make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in a minute. Alright guys, I got everything put back together here. Now let's go ahead and power it on and make sure it has the new firmware. Right, as you can see, it started up with THD, now we're in Marlin, and the TH3D version that we're on. And we're all set. That's pretty much all there is to it.
All right, guys. That was the process of installing the bootloader on the on the printer itself and updating the firmware. Now that we have the bootloader on the printer, uh, updating the firmware in the future is going to be a breeze. Um, so that it was just that last step uh, where we just changed the printer. Uh, sorry, commented out the printer and then added the printer name and sent it to the printer. Uh, that's all we're going to have to do going forward if we want to keep upgrading the firmware. Now, I believe they've been releasing patches pretty regularly on this, so I'll keep an eye out to see if there's any um, specific versions that are worth going to. And as I mentioned, the process looks like it's bad, but when you're actually going through it, if you just follow the steps, it's not too bad. If you have any questions, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below. I'll try to help you out as much as I can. And before we go ahead and wrap this video up, make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe. It'll really help this channel out. It'll help us be able to get additional uh, printers and accessories and stuff going forward to give you more videos like this. And if you have any other questions, go ahead and leave a comment below as well, uh, even if it's not directly related to troubleshooting. Uh, be curious to you know if you're using a different version of the firmware or anything like that.